What's up everyone? Doing a little old school live stream here. I haven't done one of these in a long time. I like to think that uh, with my channel that I can still act like it's a small channel like I used to and just go on even if I put out a video earlier in the day because I used to do this all the time. People would be like, you already put out a video today. Why are you doing a live stream? Because why not? I was actually uh, uh, straightening up the studio, moving around my vinyl. Um, I did a thing on my other channel that I have. What's up, Deb? Uh, the other day, you can see this, my uh, stereo system set up back here. This is in my drum room that you guys know that's on the other side of the, uh, of the studio from the main control room. And, uh, and so anyhow, so I've been cleaning up, moving stuff around because I, I was trying to do a live stream uh, album listening thing on YouTube. And I, I did one last week as a test on my other YouTube channel that we're not gonna talk about. And the video was blocked because I used an ECM record uh, album. So anyways, but I thought, instead of doing that, let me talk about some records that you uh, might not know that I have here, many of which are classic albums, but ones that I think are things, hey, Larry, I think that, that you guys should check out. Because everybody's always asking me, why don't you ever make suggestions on records to listen to? Um, so I... Every week on Spotify, that's typically what I use to listen to music, even though I have both. You guys know that I, I like all this progressive metal that's out. You've seen me interview Tosin and Pliny and, and all these people, right? So, but I always like to listen to see what's on the top 40 pop music. Uh, and I, once a week I go through and I listen to the world top 40 and the US top 40 just to, to, uh, to stay current with what's going on. Anyways, uh, but I don't really talk about old albums, typically, that I would recommend. Uh, Aaron is on here moderating, by the way. You can see we still have the uh, the bundle sale going on, 50% off for my Beato book, YouTube, Instagram, transcription bundle. It's 650 pages. That's going to go through tomorrow night. And the discount code is RB50. Uh, it's also 30% off my ear training program uh, with the same discount code. So... Uh, Anyway, so people are always asking me, why don't you do this stuff, talk about some records that you like? Because I don't really have a place that I can do that. So I, I was like, I'm just gonna go on. I stacked up a bunch of records that I'm moving around. I said, okay, these are records I'm gonna talk about. I'm talking a little bit about each one, just things that, that you may not have seen that are great records that I really dig, okay? Okay, so this record is called ESP. It's a Miles Davis record. This is a classic record. It came out, this is from his second group that he figured that he featured with uh, Wayne Shorter, Tony Williams, Ron Carter, although it says Ronald Carter, and Herb Hancock for Herbie Hancock. I always think these things, they're funny, that they're not consistent from record to record. But what you used to have is you used to have album covers, covers that had information on them that you could sit and read. Typically, jazz records would have reviews by people on these particular records, but this is a great, great record. The song ESP, Title song is actually a standard uh, that jazz players always play. But there's other incredible great songs on here, like Iris is an amazing song. So ESP Miles Davis. My Funny Valentine Miles Davis, a classic record. Stella by Starlight that's on here, All Blues, uh, My Funny Valentine. These are all, uh, all, all of you, these are all classic standards. Once again, this is um, a slightly different quintet because he had George Coleman playing a tenor on it and not Wayne on this record, but it's still Ron, Tony, and Herbie. Thank you, Keith. Uh, Charles Mingus, those of you that don't know Charles Mingus, you should know Charles Mingus. As a matter of fact, I was talking about Joni Mitchell's album entitled Mingus because I just listen to Joni Mitchell all the time. Joni Mitchell is, is like I say, I cry when I listen to Joni Mitchell, but jo uh, you should really no Charles Mingus's music. I haven't done any videos on Mingus on my channel yet, but I will be. Um, this is a double, um, this is Better Get It Into Your Soul. Now this is what I'm talking about, about album cover. Look at this, look at this, this is amazing, right? You can just look at this for days. That's what I love about double records like that. Okay, so Keith Jarrett, 
the Cologne concert. This is a, uh, a, a, a standard. This is, this is one of the greatest listening records, solo piano improvisation records that you will ever hear. Everybody should own this. This is a classic. It's one of the biggest selling jazz records ever. Uh, it's, it came out in 1975. It's phenomenal. Uh, let me go to some different... Okay, here's another Keith Jarrett record, Standards Volume 1. Okay, so this record came out in 1983. And, and I've always wanted to play stuff off this because All the Things You Are is one of the greatest recordings of all time. So it's with Keith Jarrett, Gary Peacock, and Jack DeJohnette. Day. Drummer, Jack DeJohnette, Gary Peacock, bass player. They did a lot of albums together. This is really, really incredible. Here's a record that I just never see anywhere. I got stuff all over my, my records. I have, uh, have dust all over them. This is called Blue Benson. For those of you that know George Benson or love shredding guitar, <laughs> this is a shredding guitar record. This has, uh, um, uh, where is it? Billy's Bounce. This is one of the best blues guitar uh, recordings ever on here. This is a great, great record that came out in um, 1968, okay? Uh, let's see, this is a great record, Brecker Brothers. These aren't all gonna be jazz records, but the Brecker Brothers, this is a very famous record. Some Skunk Funk, Sponge. Uh, this, this is a record that has to be in your collection, a classic, Randy Brecker, Michael Brecker, a classic fusion record, okay? Uh, let's see here. Uh, I love this record, Larry Carlton Sleepwalk. This is just an absolutely killer record. These are, these things are very hard to find on vinyl, uh, but this is a great record. I love this. You know, you guys know I'm a huge fan of Larry, and Jeff Vaccaro plays drums on here, and Abe Laboreal is on bass. I mean, this is just unbelievable. This is one of the best rhythm sections ever. Uh, Thelonious Monk, those of you that uh, know the song Round, Mid Round Midnight or don't know the song Round Midnight, you should know the song Round Midnight. It's on this record. Um, this is a, um, this is a Blue Note record and, uh, and I'm seeing, uh, I'm trying to see. Oh, so it was remastered by Rudy Van Gelder. So most of the Blue Note records, I want to say if Rudy engineered it here. Um, those of you that don't know Rudy Van Gelder, he's a guy that, that engineered all these Blue Note records. And he did them in his parents' house and then in his own studio. Um, this is a, a record that my dad loved. And I love this record. I used to listen to this with my dad all the time. This Dexter Gordon, Swiss Knights, Kenny Drew on piano, Nelson Orsted Pedersen, Alex Real on the drums, but Days of Wine and Roses and Tedder Madness on this is phenomenal. Oh my God, so good. Uh, let's see here, a little Duke Ellington meets Coleman Hawkins. I mean, what do you need to say about that, right? Uh, George Benson, oh my God. If you guys like shredding guitar, this is a live record, Weekend in L.A., Phil Upchurch and George Benson both on it. Oh my God, George just destroys it on that record. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, getting into some, some other jazz guitar records, this West record, these are just must-haves. You have to have these records. Okay, moving along. Larry Carlton, this is a live record. Mr. 335 live in Japan, killer record. Uh, let's see here, let's get some rock records. Carol King, Tapestry. Old school record, 1971, I believe it came out. It, every, pretty much every song on it is a hit. Here's a record that's out of print. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate that. This record's out of print. Pat Martino Consciousness. If you like great guitar playing, oh my God. Incredible. Incredible. Impressions by John Coltrane is the first track on here. It smokes. Uh, let's see here. Ornette Coleman, Shape of Jazz to Come. If you like... Just, if you want to just vibe out on a record, Lonely Woman, oh my God, this, this thing, Congeniality, this is just outstanding. Uh, let's see here. Old and New Dreams, oh man, this is good stuff here. This is Charlie Hayden, Don Cherry, Dewey Redmond, and Edward Blackwell. Oh, 
This is, this is the good stuff here. I love this record. I haven't listened to this in a long time, but I'm going to listen to it. My favorite Beatles record, Revolver. My God, what can you say about Revolver? It's, it is the best Beatles album ever. It's the height of their psychedelic period. This has Taxman, Eleanor Rigby, Here and There and Everywhere, She Said, She Said. I mean, just all this in Good Day Sunshine, all the psychedelic things, and then it ends with Tomorrow Never Knows. Oh yeah, this is really phenomenal. Okay, you have to own this record. If you, if you wanna know John Coltrane, there's just two records to buy. If you're gonna just start, start, but start with this one, Blue Train, okay? The song Blue Train and Moments Notice, That's Side Lazy Bird, I mean, these things are amazing, but it has, Blue Train has a double time solo by every player on here. Lee Morgan's trumpet solo is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, all the other solos are great, but the trumpet solo on here, if you don't, this is a thank you, Marco Dog, appreciate that. If you don't know this solo, you, you need to listen to this, okay. Uh, a little Birth of Cool, Miles, forget it. You gotta own this, you gotta have Birth of Cool, or you gotta listen to it, you don't have to own them. Just go to, to Spotify or uh, Apple Music and you can listen to Birth of Cool. This is, um, uh, it's, uh, it, 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 yeah, what, you gotta listen to it. I can't really talk about that, it's just, it's perfection. Okay, this record, Pat Metheny, 8081. This is a band with Charlie Hayden, uh, Jack DeJanette on drums, Charlie Hayden on the bass, Dewey Redman on the saxophone, Michael Brecker, and um, yeah, that's the band, right? Yeah, uh, but there's a song on here that has the best acoustic guitar recording that I've ever heard. I can't play it on here, this is, this is on ECM Records, but there's a song called Going Ahead, and Pat is playing a Guild, for those of you guitar players out there, Guild F50 acoustic. It's the fattest single note solos and the most melodic guitar solo ever, but just, I'm talking a fat guitar sound. The, 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 it sounds like the acoustic strings are that big around. And he's, he's got hands of steel playing it. And it is absolutely beautiful. Okay, oh, Belonging, Keith Jarrett. There's a lot of people that were influenced by this record. I remember talking when I interviewed Chris Potter, who's one of the greatest uh, sax players in the world today. And he, we talked about this record. Jan Garbrecht on the saxophone, who's just uh, outstanding. This is, this is Keith Jarrett. Uh, this is this is one of Keith Jarrett's finest records. I think 74 it came out. Yeah, 74. Um, Bill Evans. Everybody's like, you never talk about Bill Evans, the Village Vanguard sessions. For those of you that don't know what the Village Vanguard was, it's a club in New York. It was a club. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate that. I hope I'm not missing any, uh, any of these things. Cult of Personnel, I'd love to see you do the... Uh, okay. You know, I don't always see these things. I... I, I um, Anthony, thank you so much. Um, it's hard for me to talk about these things and respond, but thank you to all the Super Chats. You guys are amazing. Um, okay, so Bill Evans, Village Vanguard. Village Vanguard is a club that holds about 40 people, or did. I don't know if it's open anymore. Um, this is another great Bill Evans record that I've not listened to in forever, but it's with Eddie Gomez in the bass and Philly Joe Jones. Thank you, Buffalo Pilot. Um, okay, Heavy Weather, this... Thank you, Aaron. This record, Weather Report, gotta own it. Birdland. If there's one song you need to know, ban thank you, Deb, Vanguard's still open. I saw, last time I was there was 1984. Been a long time. Uh, Alex Acuna, Wayne Shorter, Jacko. I mean, this is just, this is, you know, uh, uh, Joe Zolino, forget it, right? I made a video about this record, Jacko's first record. I, I interviewed Gary Burton, and he and I talked about this, uh, which is uh, Chick Corea and Gary Burton, Crystal Silence, a classic record, one of his biggest records. Another great Bill Evans record that is totally worthy of having. Let's change it up a little bit. Elton John's greatest hits, forget it, right? This is unbelievable. Your song, Daniel, um, let's see, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting. Rocket Man, Benny and the Jets, Don't Let the Sun Go Down Me, I mean, Crocodile Rock, what, what, come on. How do you go wrong with that? I used to love it when people put out Greatest Hits records. Uh, okay, let's see here. 
Tomorrow is the question, Ornette Coleman, once again, just make a list of these, just go through them. Uh, this record, Ring, Gary Burton Quartet with Eberhard Weber is, is a fantastic record that came out in 1974. It was really when Pat Metheny joined the uh, uh, Gary Burton group, but I knew of the record because, um, and I went to study with Mick Goodrick, who's the other guitar player on there when I, when I was in 1984, 10 years after this. I studied with Mick during my master's degree. He plays guitar in this, he's an unbelievable player. Um, okay, so let's get into some other rock stuff now. Oh wait, no, first of all, this is one of my favorite, all, this is my, pretty much my favorite West record, this in Boss Guitar. This is a live record and it's got Jimmy Cobb on the drums, and I did a video on Jimmy Cobb, but this is unreal. You wanna hear smoking playing? Check out the sax solo that Johnny uh, Griffin plays on Blue and Boogie. Wow, every chorus smokes. Um, and if you wanna hear smoking bass playing, Nels Henning, Orsted Pedersen, forget it. They play Olio on this. Uh, he and Joe Pass, it's unbelievable. Okay, rock records. This is one of my favorite rock records. If you're into shoegazing music, this is a shoegazing classic. The 1993 record, I think it's 93, Mescal Head by Swerve Driver. Every song on there is incredibly great. Yes, I've had these LPs since I was a kid. <laughs> I bought these in this, I bought them in the 70s. What am I gonna say? Uh, this has, like, every song is incredible. Girl on a Motorbike to Rest, you'll find it everywhere. Last Train to Satansville. Ma hey, uh, Harry and Maggie, the change is going to come. Duel, Blowing Cool. Oh, my God. MM Abduction. This is just, uh, honestly, one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite listening records of all time. Along with this, right? Little Zeppelin 1, maybe some Zeppelin 2. Can't go wrong with that. Maybe some Zeppelin 4. Um, okay, this record changed my life. My dad gave this to me when I was, uh, I forget how old I, I was. I was in high school or junior high or something. My dad gave it to me for Christmas and said, if you ever, this came out in 1973, if you ever learn to play guitar like this, you've accomplished something with your life. I was like, what? Who's this? And it sat unopened for months. Okay, then one day, my dad's at work. What's up, Billy? My dad's at work. I was like, okay, I'm open this thing up. My dad was a tough guy. He was great, he was, and he was an incredible listener. Didn't know, never played an instrument, but but just my parents were amazing, right? I was like, what does this thing sound like? I started listening to it, night and day, first track on there. I'm like, okay, solo guitar. It's only solo guitar, right? And then it's Stella by Starlight. But by the time it gets to How High the Moon in Cherokee, I freaked out. I was like. This is unbelievable. I mean, I literally freaked out. Then it got to the second side. Sweet Lorraine, Have You Met Miss Jones, Round Midnight, and then All the Things You Are. When I heard All the Things You Are, I said, that's it. I'm gonna learn this for when dad gets home from work. My dad got home at five o'clock every day. It worked on the railroad. He drove his Penn Central truck in, came in the driveway. I could hear his truck coming in. He had these wheels on the front that would go down on the railroad tracks. They would lower down and he'd drive on the railroad tracks. I remember one time I was with him and he stopped because there was a turtle trying to cross the tracks. And my dad stopped the truck, got out, walked in front of the truck, picked up the huge turtle, moved it out of the way off the tracks and got back in and didn't say anything and just dr and kept driving. I mean, come on, right? I didn't say anything either. My dad, I never said anything with my dad. We just listened to the radio in the car all the time. Um, okay, little, uh, okay, here. You guys know that I love Angie. This is the record it's from, Goat's Head Soup. It's, uh, it, it, nothing to say about it. It's, it's it, Angie's the greatest ballad of all time. I should have had it on my list. Okay, here's a record that, those of you that know Wayne Shorter know this record. Native Dancer. It is, the, the, the writing on here is so beautiful. You got to listen to this record. This is a classic. You wanna hear great music? Wayne Shorter on this record. Um, this is the late, one of the latest Swerve Driver records. I have it on here. I wasn't born to lose you. I just love Swerve Driver. Anything they did, forget it. Unbelievable. Uh, let's see here, what else we got here? Um, okay, so this one is, um, 
this is, uh, I spilled something on here. Hold on. There we go. This is Keith Jarrett facing you. Old, old school record. Um, this is a great record, Keith Jarrett. Miles Davis kind of blue. You already know that. Uh, this is another great Keith Jarrett. Boppy Killer record. This is our music, Ornette Coleman. What's to say? Just listen to it. It's absolutely phenomenal. Simon and Garfunkel's greatest hits. Every song is a classic. Every song. So good. Everybody's like, Why, where's his new records? Well, I stopped buying records once, uh, when CDs came out. Okay, Giant Steps. I don't need to tell you about that. You know that's great. Round Midnight. Miles. Round about midnight, so good. It came out, uh, let's see, this is with his original quartet, but with Red Garland on the piano. Paul Chambers on the bass, Philly Joe, John Coltrane. Uh, what year did this come out? I shouldn't know this. Um, it came out a long time ago, that's an old record. Uh, let's see, oh, here's a great one. This is a record you w w won't know, but this is a killer guitar record. Bonita. Joe Diorio. For those of you that like outside playing, modern guitar playing, whew, that's modern guitar playing. A uh, little monk, crisscross, the police, ghost in the machine, forget, must have, kind of blue. Uh, what else we got here? Um, Alan Holdsworth's first solo record, IOU. Got to own this, got to know this. This is absolutely phenomenal. Um, this is Larry Carlton's first record. This is, has uh, Room 335 on it. This, this came out in the late 70s or so. Miles Stones, Miles Davis. I love jazz, what can I say? Incredible jazz guitar, West Montgomery. Oh, Exile on Main Street, Rolling Stones. Okay, my favorite song in this record is sung by Keith Richards, and it's the song Happy. And it is so great. Like you think, you're listening to it, and you think, man, Keith Richards is a great singer. And then Mick Jagger comes in in the chorus, and you go, oh, wow. <laughs> this is, it is ridiculous. This is just so, there are so many great songs on here this is one of the greatest rock records of all time. Okay, I cry when I talk about Joni Mitchell. This is Shadows and Light. I have about three copies. I literally have three copies of this. I listen to Joni Mitchell all the time. This is a live record with Pat Metheny on guitar, Jaco Pastorius on the bass, Lyle Mays on the keyboards, uh, Michael Brecker on the saxophone, obviously Joni, and who's on drums? Is it... Um, uh, I should know, uh, let's see here, who plays drums on this? Um, Don Elias on drums. Uh, and the, the songs on this are just beyond, they're just spellbinding. I mean, just, it's all Joni's, um, it, it's her mid, the period in the 70s, all my favorite records, and these are incredible. Hey, Brett, what's up? Don Elias, I knew Brett was on it. Do yourself a favor, listen to this record. Just, just go right from this live stream and listen to Shadows and Light. It is a live record. There's a video of the whole concert on YouTube recorded in 1979 that you can watch for free. Uh, okay. I got all my Pat Metheny records here. I got uh, a little Ahmad Jamal. Let's see, what else do I have? Oh, this is a record that I love. This is a Pat Metheny record, Rejoicing. Um, I can't play it on here, but there's a song on here called Lonely Woman that is beautiful. It's an Ornette Coleman, or Horace Silver tune, and followed by an Ornette Coleman called Tears Inside that's a D-flat blues. But Pat's tone is so dark on it, but it's unbelievable. Uh, by the way, discount code for the uh, for my Beato Book YouTube transcription bundle is RB50. 50% 50 off. This is how I make my living, really, is, is through. So it's a 650-page PDF. It's my Beato Book bundled with my 
Instagram uh, transcription bundle. You should follow me on Instagram at Rick Beato one. I'm, I'm a thousand followers away from being at 180,000. And you guys that don't follow me on here um, uh, could actually get me there, get me to 180,000. I actually need less than that, probably about 600 or so. Uh, and there's, a, there's a guitar synth solo on here called on Story from a Stranger that is absolutely beautiful. I would talk about it and break it down if I could. Okay, if you like chops, you see people on Instagram, on YouTube and everything with great chops. Oscar Peterson's chops on this, oh my God, the solo piano pieces on this are ridiculous. Oh my God. Uh, he does Stella by Starlight with Joe, a duet that is absolutely phenomenal. But back home in Indiana, which is Donna Lee, I talk about Donna Lee, the Charlie Parker tune, but that's the same chord changes. Wow. It is nuts. This record came out in 1975, and this is the pinnacle of Oscar's playing. Oscar and Joe, really, but Oscar's playing is, is beyond imagine, imagination. Okay, Birth, this Keith Jarrett record, thank you, talking about the dude. Um, thank you very much. This record is beautiful. Not only is this Keith Jarrett record phenomenal, but it's phenomenal sounding. You wanna hear what a real record should sound like? Oh my God. I'm not sure who did this, who engineered this. Let me see here. It has Paul Motion on the drums. Dewey Redman plays uh, sax and clarinet on it. Uh, the Charlie Hayden, Keith Jarrett. Um, Lou Han. Recording and remixing. Oh my God. It sounds, you listen to it on a stereo? <sighs> It'll just blow your mind. This sounds so good. Okay, Frank Sinatra. If you're gonna listen to one Frank Sinatra record, and I, you should listen to Frank Sinatra, because Frank is the man. But the arrangements on this by Klaus Ogerman are so good. If you wanna le learn about film composition and how to arrange for strings and arrange complex chords, this is un. Real. These are all Jobim, Antonio Carlos Jobim, one of the greatest composers of all time, Brazilian genius, super genius. A girl from Ipanema. I mean, I mean, like all the Quiet Nights and Stars, Corcovado, the Quiet Nights, Quiet Nights, Stars, Meditation, How Insensitive. I mean, it just it has all the songs on here. It's one of my dad's favorite, favorite records of all time. Um, that he and I used to listen to that together constantly. Um, uh, George Benson Breezen. Uh, this is a record called Motions and Emotions, uh, Oscar Peterson record, Motions and Emotions. Klaus Ogerman did the string arrangements on here. And there's a song, Wave, which was my dad's favorite song. But what's great about Wave is that it just vamps over dominant chords, sus chords. And Oscar just shreds over, hell, over sustained chords, okay? You want to learn how to play great licks? Just go to the end of that song when Oscar is vamping. And <laughs> it is blow your mind, okay? Um, okay, somebody mentioned Herbie Hancock. Okay, this record, VSOP. Okay, so this record, one time when I was in 1981, this particular record... Um, so you got Tony Williams, Herbie Hancock, Freddie Hubbard, Wayne Shorter, Ron Carter. I played this record for, for Lyle Mays. So Lyle Mays came to uh, came back to my room when I was a, a sophomore with me and about four of my friends to play my roommate, Paul Smith, in chess, okay? This is after the Matheny group played in 1981 at Cornell University. I was talking to Lyle backstage. I worked at the concert because that's the only way I could get in. I couldn't afford it. So I worked, I was an usher. And so I, Lyle was talking and he said, um, he goes, anybody play chess here? I said, oh, my, my roommate is a you know, highly rated chess player. He said, really? I wanna go play him. Okay, so we hitchhiked, Lyle and I, up to, the, to my room. I didn't have a car. So two girls picked us up. We went up the hill to our apartment and my other friends hitchhiked behind us. So we get there. My buddy Paul's there. And I, I come in that thing. I said, hey, Paul, Lyle Mays is here to play, to play you in chess. And Paul thought I was joking. He was on the other side of the room. He's like, what are you talking about? Why don't you bring Pat? And I said, no, Lyle Mays is really here. And he turns around and there's Lyle Mays. So <laughs> 
We had this massive John Coltrane painting that Paul's dad had done. Now, Paul's mom uh, was one, Ron Carter's wife's best friend. Okay, this is a crazy story. And But Paul's dad painted all, did all the album covers for Chuck, Man, Chuck Mangione, right? And, and Lyle sees this incredible painting of John Coltrane that we have. It's four by four. Thank you, Paul, very much. And so he comes in and we play VSOP. We put it on. We order Domino's Pizza. And about four or five of my friends come in and, and Paul unrolls his chessboard. And he and Lyle sit down. They played for about an hour and a half. And, and Lyle is li listening to this going, wow, this record is amazing. He, he, he was just uh, really, really dug it, right? Um, okay, Back in Black, I'm sorry, but you, what are you going to say about that? Okay, Gateway of Dreams, Klaus Ogerman. This, I, yeah, I've been talking about Klaus Ogerman. This is one of his solo records. Um, or ga oh, not Gateway of Dreams, Gate of Dreams. Okay, so this has um, uh, George Benson's on this, Michael Brecker is on this, Joe Sample, David Sanborn. His next record after his Cityscapes is, is absolutely phenomenal. Klaus died in 1980, in, I'm sorry, in 2016 to no fanfare. No one knew he died. No one talked about it. I'm talking about it. One of the greatest arrangers of all time. Just a genius. On this record, um, Bill Evans, there's a quote on here. Klaus, Gate of Dreams. A reminder of finer things. What do you say about that, right? Jaco Pastorius, Invitation, uh, Clifford Brown Memorial Album, uh, Charles Lloyd at Monterey, Monterey Jazz Festival, Keith Jarrett. Um, oh, 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 oh. A Certain Mr. Jobim. If you want a Brazilian Bossa Nova record, you've got to own this. Klaus Ogerman did the arrangements on this. I bought everything that Klaus Ogerman arranged. I bought. Any Joe Beam record, I bought. Period. You guys know I love Peter Frampton. Frampton Comes Alive. Here's my original record that I got in 1976, which I still listen to. Um, Return to Forever, Chick, Light as a Feather. Let's see, what song on here that you might know? How about 500 Miles High? You ever hear of that? That's a standard. What about Spain? You know the song Spain? This is the record Spain comes from. You know, I talked about, about um, Bossa Nova. Stan gets Joao Gilberto. Oh my God, forget it. Thank you, Grant, appreciate that. This is another this is another classic record. If you love jazz and, and bossa nova music, you will love that. Uh, let's see here. This is an interesting record here. This is, uh, where is it? Uh, was this the record? No, I don't, oh shoot, I don't have it here. I thought this was the, this is the one, but it's not. Um, okay, so those are some records that I have. I have hundreds and hundreds of records. Thank you, my key, uh, uh, key on men. I can't read that. It's so small. Uh, these are just a few of the records that I have. Lawrence, you missed my Brecker Brothers record here. Um, I have. I don't. Have, I didn't bring any of my rock records in here. I have. Uh, I have. Tons and tons of rock records. That's, what, are you, what am I talking about? I just had showed you all the early Zeppelin records, uh, but I have I have hundreds of records that are in boxes that I'm I'm gonna I'm trying to reorganize here, over here from my listening station right there. I need a better turntable actually, but um, any metal? I of course I have metal, um, but most of my metal records are on CDs. They're in another place down here. I have a whole massive thing of CDs that I'll have to go through. You get you to figure. So I got a CD player in 1985. So I started buying CDs and I bought albums and CDs simultaneously um, for a long time because I love the sound of, of uh, 
honestly, I didn't know if CDs were gonna hang around. And so I started buying those things. I started buying CDs at the same time as, um, as I was still buying albums. And obviously they were, uh, they were around at both of them at the same time. But a lot of the metal and things that I bought, you know, you guys know I, I like grunge, things like that. I mean, all that stuff I bought on CDs. Really everything from the mid 80s on. If you're talking about Meshuga bands like that, anything from that era are all on CDs. It's, it's really weird that, uh, you know, everybody starts saying, oh, nobody's going to buy LPs anymore. So I, st I honestly stopped buying LPs. I would, buy, I would buy them occasionally because they became cheaper and cheaper, and I would get them at used record stores because I'd like to go. There were places in Rochester that I'm from that had bootlegs, tons of bootlegs. Um... Yeah, my Frank Zappa records are in the other room. Um, um, I know people were talking about Zappa there. I have U2 records. I got Charlie Parker records I didn't even show you. I actually had, have records here I didn't show. I, I have a bunch of Charlie Parker records. But the uh, Charlie Parker records um, are, they, they were, they're so repackaged. I have the, uh, the complete Savoy Sessions, I, I think is the record that's a box set that has really all of, all the great, uh, all the great Char uh, Charlie Parker stuff on it. Um, I have Chicago records too. Yeah, all my rock records are, are in the next room over. These things are heavy to carry around. It's insane how heavy they are. I have tons of classical records too. So many classical records, but I have a lot of classical stuff on CD as well. Um, when I started in college, so I went college, undergrad, 1980 to 84. CDs came out in 83, and they started making the transition in the listening lab that we would go during my undergrad at Ithaca. They made the transition. They stopped buying LPs, but you'd go in there, and half the things would be LPs, half would be CDs. By the time I got to my master's degree at New England Conservatory in Boston, it was many more CDs, but they still had LPs. So every listening station had a turntable and a CD player at it. And you just, you know, depending on what they had. Thank you, Gerald, appreciate that. Um, and I have tons of stuff on cassette. Somebody said, angry shoebox said, nothing on cassette, oh my God. I have tons of stuff on, on, on a cassette, tons of stuff. Nuki Poo, thank you so much, appreciate that. Jellyfish, what makes this song great? Jellyfish doesn't have the, I talked to Tim, who's my dear friend, who's been on many of my videos, who played he played bass on Spilt Milk, and Roger Manning. I've talked to them about this. They do not have the Jellyfish, um, they don't have the Jellyfish tracks. They just don't. They couldn't get them from the label, I guess. And uh, But they said that they, you know, once everything is over and people can start traveling again, uh, they will come here and we will do a What Makes a Sun Great on Jellyfish together. Okay, so um, my sale going on today, you wanna support the channel, RB50 is the um, uh, for my Beato book, Instagram transcription bundle. I sell t-shirts, I sell mugs on my store. If you already own my, my Beato book and you own the transcription bundle, you wanna support the channel, you can do that. Or you can become a member of the Beato Club. I don't talk a lot about the Beato Club on here. A lot of the things that I have, like my, I, I have a thing where I do a 10 minute reaction to your songs and everything. Those things are always filled up and everything. Everybody gets mad at me when they go there. But the Beato Club is another way that you can support the channel. Ear training. Those of you who want to develop your ear, RB50, it's 30% off our ear training course. Uh, we're adding a new chapter again today. Uh, I, I had Billy in here. We were working on it already today. We at work every day, seven days a week. You guys know that, right? Because I love this. I love it. This has been my favorite live stream I've done. Thank you, Patrick. In a long time. I'm going to go back and read the super chats and I apologize for not getting to them. My eyesight is not great here on, because it's so small on the phone. It's really hard to read. Anyway, so I went through a lot of albums. You guys are amazing. Go to Spotify, go to Apple Music, go to YouTube, wherever you want and watch these. I'm getting old. What? Mate? Um, there, I might be in the Wall Street Journal this week. I got interviewed for an article in the Wall Street Journal. Okay, <laughs> it's, I won't mention the to the topic, what it is. It's about being, <laughs> I'm not gonna mention it. 
We'll see if it comes out. But I did get I did get interviewed for it by somebody that watches the channel here. He wrote to me a couple weeks ago, and Billy says, he's like, somebody from the Wall Street Journal wrote to you, and then I couldn't find the email. And then he wrote me back, and I called him, uh, and I said, uh, I said, you want to write an article about me? He said, yeah. And I said, for when? He goes, next week. And I was like, what? I said, when do you want to do the when do you want to do the interview? And I said, he goes, how about right now? I said, okay. And uh, so it was pretty funny. So I don't know if it's just going to be about me. Uh, somebody just said Glenn John's drum miking technique. I just did a video about that. Oh, I have a video on speakers that I, I compared it, a vintage orange cabinet to another one. I put out uh, I, I put out earlier today, my good friend Kinch did an interview with me on his, if you see Streetwise guitar there, on his channel, is competition in music good? He asked me that question. And I answered that question, but I think those of you know the answer to that, but you should go check out Kinch's channel. Um, about that is competition in music good streetwise guitar you guys are the best love you so much i'm going to come on and keep doing these occasionally because this is what i used to do in the old days and i was like oh, i got a million a million and a half subscribers you don't do this stuff it's like screw that i don't believe, forget that you just go on whenever you feel like it this is old school you guys are the best rb50 discount code the auto book, Instagram, transcription bundle, and ear training. So it's 50% off that, 30% off ear training. You guys are amazing. We'll talk to you later. See you. Bye.